We have formulas in Excel to extract the year, month, or day portion of a date. However, we do not have a single function to extract the quarter of a year. I'm Nabil Murad. I covered the date functions in a previous tutorial, and I'll put the link in the description below this video. Today I'm going to show you five methods to calculate the quarter from a date. I call these methods great, flexible, easy, popular, and magical. So let's get started. Here is my start file. You can download that file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. In column A, I have a list of dates, and in columns B to F, I'll be using five methods to extract a quarter from these dates. I have a conditional formatting in the range, which shows a different color for each quarter, and here is the key for the colors. I'm in the start worksheet. I'm going to start by extracting the month from the date in column A. So I'll be typing equal month, month of cell A2, and when I close the bracket and hit enter, it extracts the month July is month number 7. Then I'm going to wrap my month function in a VLOOKUP function, and the VLOOKUP function requires a table array, so if I have month number 1, it extracts quarter number 1. If I have month number 4, it extracts quarter number 2. Month number 7, it extracts quarter number 3. So let's see how we put the month function in a VLOOKUP function. I put my month function in the edit mode by hitting the F2 key, and then I click before the month, and I type VLOOKUP. What's your lookup value? My lookup value is whatever comes from the month function. I hit comma. What's your table array? which means, where do you look for it? Well, I look for it in this table array, the two columns, N and O. I'm selecting the entire range, and then I want to lock it because I'm copying my function down. So when I hit F4, I'm locking the range. Then I want to extract a value from the second column, so my column index number is 2. I'm looking for an exact match, so exact means false, false means 0, so I'm typing 0. And then I close the bracket and then hit Enter, and look at that, I'm extracting the quarter. I can copy my function down by hovering over the lower right corner and double click and send it down. I have a little issue here, which is what will happen if I go and delete the table array. So if I hit the delete key on my keyboard, then my VLOOKUP function will fail. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to modify my VLOOKUP function. I'm selecting the entire range. I put it in the edit mode F2, and I would like to hard code the table array. So I click in my VLOOKUP function. In order to select the table array, I just click on it in the screen tip, and when it is selected, I'm going to calculate it inside the function. So I hit the F9 key, and look at that. 1, 1, semicolon, 2, 1, and so on. Comma means column, and semicolon means row. So the entire table is embedded inside my VLOOKUP function. Now I can hit Control enter to populate this range. And now if I go and delete this range, nothing happens to my VLOOKUP function. It's a totally independent function, and that's why I called it a great function. In the next method, I'll be using a choose function. And the choose function consists of two parts. The first part is a number. And this number will be returned by the month function. It could be any month from 1 to 12. And the second part consists of a set of numbers that will be extracted based upon the number returned by the month function. So if the month function is returning 3, then it will be extracting a value from position 3. And if the month function is returning 6, then it will be extracting a value from position 6. Let's see how we create the choose function. I start by typing equal choose. And then I hit the tab key. What's the number? What's the index number you want? I want a number from 1 to 12 returned by the month function. So I type month, and then I hit tab, month of what? Month of cell A2, and I close the bracket. So the month function is returning a number. And accordingly, based upon this number, I'll be entering 12 values. So if I have 7, then value number 7 will be selected. If I have 3, value number 3 will be selected. So I hit comma, and I type the quarter number. So if the month function is returning month 1, 2, or 3, I need quarter 1. So I type 1, comma 1, comma 1. And then if the month function is returning 4, 5, 6, then I want the second quarter and so on. So I'm going to type 2, comma 2, comma 2, 3, comma 3, comma 3, and then 4, comma 4, comma 4, and then I close the choose function. Now if I hit enter, I'm extracting the quarter. I can simply double click and send it down. 
For my next technique, I'll be using a roundup function. So let's understand how this works. I'm going to type equal month, and I would like to extract the month from cell A2. So when I close the bracket, this is returning the month. I don't want the month, I want the quarter. So I put my function in the edit mode, and I want to divide it by 3. When I divide by 3, it's returning a date. That's simply formatting. Let me copy it down by double-clicking on the lower right corner. Then I want to strip off this formatting to reveal the real number stored behind the scene. I use the shortcut for general formatting, Control shift tilde and now I'm getting a number with lots of decimals. I want to round up that number to the integer values. So I put my function in the edit mode by hitting F2, and I want to wrap the month's function in a roundup function. So I'll be typing round up and then I type a comma I want to round it to the integers so I type a zero and then I close the bracket and to populate my function I hit control enter and I was able to extract the quarter by using this easy method in my next technique I'll be using a ceiling function this is a popular technique what does the ceiling function do the ceiling function will take a number and it will round it to a multiple of three so if I get 1, 2, 3 from the month's function, that will be rounded up to the closest multiple of 3, which is 3. 4, 5, 6 will be rounded up to the closest multiple, which is 6, and so on. So if I divide by 3, that will be returning the quarter. Let's see how we do this. So I type equal ceiling, and then I hit tab, ceiling of the month's function. So months of cell A2, and I close the bracket. I want to round it. To a multiple of 3, so I type comma 3, and then I close the bracket and then hit enter, so it's returning 9. What if I put this function in the edit mode and divide by 3? So when I hit F2 and type a forward slash and type 3, now it should be returning the quarter. What you see right now, this is formatting. So before copying, I want to switch to the general formatting, Control shift tilde Now I can copy my function down and look automatically the conditional formatting stored in cell pops up. In my last technique, I'll be using a magical workaround with the month function. Let's understand the technique first. We know that the month could be any number from 1 to 12. What if you multiply that number by 10? So 1 will be 10, 2 will be 20, and so on. If you take the month function of this second number, that will be returning the quarter. Let's see how we do this. I'm in cell F2. I'll be typing equal month, and then I hit tab month of what i want the month of months so i type month another time and then i select cell a2 close the bracket for the month function multiply it by 10 and then close the bracket when we hit enter that's magical i was able to extract the quarter let's double click and send it down and as you see the conditional formatting pops up and here is the color key for the conditional formatting one final thing i would like to do i don't want to see just the numbers i want to see q1 q2 q3 how can i do that this is custom formatting i'm selecting the entire range and i want to open the format cell dialog box so i hit Control one to open the format cell dialog box this is custom formatting so i go to custom I delete whatever I have under type, and in double quotation I type capital Q and the space, and then I close the double quotation. I want definitely to have a number, so I write zero as a code in the custom format, and when I hit OK, I would have applied the custom formatting, and I see Q1, Q2, and so on. I showed you five methods to calculate the quarter from a date. Let me know in a comment which of the five functions you prefer. I also added a bonus sheet with links to some of my popular tutorials. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.